Hey guys, uh, in this video, we are going to see how can we make a put request in rest assured. Now, in most of the cases, put is used to send data to a server to update an existing record. But in some cases, you can also use it for creating a record. Okay, let me show you. So what do you do? So you provide the ID because based on the ID only, you can identify a record uniquely. Okay, and then you perform the update operation. Okay, so the first thing that we do is we check whether that particular member is available and if it is found, okay, we return that else sometimes we say 404 meaning the member does not exist. But again, as you could see, this is purely the logic. Okay, so if there, there is a requirement which says that, okay, if the record does not exist, create a new one. All right. So in such cases, you can also write the code to create uh, a record from this put request. Okay, a put should only be used if you are replacing a resource in its entirety. What does that mean? Okay, that means the request body for a post request and a put request for a specific resource would be same. Okay. Like I said, if the body is same, if everything is same, which means that the way we are going to set up the request is also same. Okay. So therefore, I'm going to copy this whole code from my post request. Okay. So I divided this code into three parts for post, but now I'm going to just cover all of this in this one video because I don't need to write the code. Let me quickly walk you through and make the necessary changes wherever required. Okay. So we have this request specification object, which we are going to use in each and every test case. And then in here, we are setting up the base URI, we are setting up the base path, but in the base path, now we also have to provide in the path parameter. Okay, so let's pass it dynamically. So in here, we just say ID. Okay, and we have to pass in the path parameter. So in the request specification, we are going to add this path parameter information. Okay, so my path parameter name is id so i'm just gonna say in here id all right and let's try to update a record which has got the id 4 which one is that so for that we're gonna open our database all right and this is my current record okay so it's already running great now let's continue with the changes so we are providing the header so this accept header will tell the server that I want the response in the JSON format. Okay, great. But since we are also passing the request body, so we also have to inform the server the about the type of our data. Okay, so therefore we are saying content type application forward slash JSON. Great. So we have created these two headers and then we have created an array list. Okay, in that we have added all of these and then we can pass both the headers using the headers method. Okay, and we provide in that particular array list. Okay, so then this is how you construct it. So you say rest assured dot given you provide in the authentication. So in our case, it is basic authentication. So username is admin password is also admin. Okay, so this is going to return me the request specification object. Okay, which is HTTP request. Now, this is my first test case. So I'm gonna set it to true. This is not create member. So I need to change the name of it. So I'm just gonna change the name of all of my test cases. All right, so I have updated the name of all of my test cases. This first test case is the one in which we are using the non BDD style. Now, this thing might look scary so don't worry about it i'm gonna delete everything from here i'm gonna go to postman okay and this is my put request i'm just gonna copy this thing okay come back to my eclipse and paste it you could see that eclipse has formatted it correctly for me okay so i don't need to explicitly mention these escape characters okay good and then all right, once the request specification has got the body attached to it, all we have to do is we have to send this request. Okay, but remember the type is put this time. All right, and at the end, we get the response. Okay, so we are storing that in here and then we are simply printing the body of the response onto the console. Okay, so I'm going to save it and run it.
all right so it's successful and this is the output that we are seeing in here let's see if the value is updated all right so you see this value is updated great let's move on to the next one so in the next one we are going to follow the bdd style okay so now in here again we have to supply the body okay it's just that the way we are going to chain these methods would be different okay so you have the request specification you have the body method in which you pass the body and then you say when we make a put request okay and then return so this is going to return me what the response okay and then from the response we are simply using the as pretty string method and gonna display the outcome onto the console okay so let me save this run it from Ravina that would be changed to Rian okay so yeah it's successful we go back and see it's updated great so let's move on to the next one I'm gonna set it to false next one we are making use of a map okay so we are simply creating a map object using hash map okay and then we are providing again these values using this put method okay so we have the map ready and now in the body method you can provide that map object okay and we're gonna change this post to put that's it it's that simple so if you know post put is very easy okay so i'm gonna save everything and run it again so from rian this should be changed to julia now okay it's successful we go back and it's julia it's updated great so let's skip this now and move on to the next one all right so the next one is we are making use of json object which comes from google json library that we have added as a dependency in our project okay so in here what are we doing we are creating this json object and using the add property method we are providing in the key and value so key is name and the value is john and same way we are adding one more property key is gender value is male all right and we have to change this method from post to put that's it we have to set this to true okay save everything run it so now from julia it should be changed to john all right it's updated let's go back and yes it's updated so let me set it to false and we move on to the next one what are we doing in here okay we are updating the member using the json file okay where is the json file so source test resource payloads and now you have this update member.json file so you have tina and gender is female now right i'm gonna close it you're gonna read the file using this file api all right so we have file body is equal to new file and we'll provide in the path of that file okay so this time we have to change this to update okay that's one change and then as it is like you know in the body you can also provide in the file object so we are providing that and the method has to be changed to put guys all right rest of the things will remain the same so let us save everything and execute it so there you go the data is being read from the file and let's check that in the database again okay, here also it is updated great all right guys so in this method what we are going to do is we are going to convert this update member json into an input stream and for that we have this get class method which comes from java.lang.object and then you have got this get class loader which gives you the class loader and on that you have the get resource as stream okay so in here you have to provide in the name of the file you, which you want to read so i say update okay and i'm gonna save it i'm gonna set it to true okay now once you have the input stream okay you say http request dot body and in the body you provide in that input stream okay and rest of the things are pretty simple so whenever you do the put request okay you get the response back you store that into a response and then you're printing the body okay now what i've done is i've quickly changed this to uh, ria and female okay and the server is started and now if we execute this the ria should get changed to tina okay it's changed in here and again here also i'm gonna uh, switch back to ria and start my server again because in the next test case also we have to make use of the same file so let's make the required changes so this time we are going to read the file into byte array and for that we are going to make use of this 
files which comes from java.nio.file.files then you have got this read all bytes okay this returns you the byte array what does it take it takes the path object okay so you say paths.get and you provide in the path of that file okay so the path is this only so this time you see update member.json all right and again the rest of the things are pretty much the same you are passing that byte array to the body method which is there in the request specification and then you set the method to put you save it and execute this so again that ria should get changed to tina okay so it's done and in here also it's updated very nice all right so the next two test cases are to do with the models okay so we supply the request body using models so i strongly encourage you to go and check out my videos on post basics so like i said in the beginning that i've created three videos i guess six seven eight so uh, if you want to understand this member concept and then the transient keyword and you know uh, how can we then use this exclude expose property from google json okay to have better control over what we want to serialize what we want to deserialize and so on okay then please go and check out part eight okay in here what we require to do is we just have to set the id property as transient when we do so okay that particular property would not be serialized where are we serializing this okay when i'm saying serializing so from this java object we are converting that into a json where is that happening it is happening internally in here okay so a client is supposed to send the json data over to the server okay because in the application in the in the before method sorry uh, we are creating one header content type okay so this client is going to convert your member or the pojo object into application json this is what we are saying okay so where the transformation uh, is happening so the transformation is happening in here internally okay so uh, therefore now a model also has the id field okay which is an integer so in here in the constructor we are only initializing what okay we are initializing the name and gender so what would happen to the id value okay so if you do not initialize it it will take up the default value which in case of integer is zero so then uh, you would be sending something like this okay so if you say id and you set it to zero okay let's see what would happen if you do so you hit the send button and you get this message it's a bad request and please provide only name and gender therefore we have to exclude this field okay and to exclude that field only there are two ways transient and using the google json library okay so this particular method talks about uh, setting the field and as transient so if i open my member in here you could see if i just comment out all these exposes okay and this one as well so you have to do something like this okay so i'm gonna save this go to my put basics i'm gonna set this test case to true and change the method to put the additional thing that you see in here is log all with the help of these methods you are going to log the request object onto the console let me get rid of this uh, system dot out dot print ln statement i'm gonna save it and execute this all right so as you could see this is now updated to steve so let's check that and yes it is updated in database as well so let me mark this test case as false and let us run the last test case when we are making use of the google json library in here rather than making this as transient because then this will interfere with any other logic in our program we just say okay hey i'm gonna decorate my fields like so using this expose annotation which comes from google json and with the help of this you know i define that okay hey i'm exposing this property for both serialization and deserialization but if you want like you know only serialization should be false and deserialization should be true so then you can further pass in these values like so okay so i'm gonna save it again go back to my put basics 
and in here what are we doing we have created that uh, member all right then we are building up our json object okay we, using this method which says exclude field without expose annotations okay so now once you have this json object you just say convert that to json and you provide in that member okay now again you have this string body which you can easily pass let's change the method to put okay save everything and this time it should be changed to steven from steve let me save this and there you go so it is updated so as you see now it is steven okay so that was about the uh, put request so one more thing before we end this now as you might have seen that you know the post and put request are pretty much the same okay then what are the differences so the difference is like i said you know a post request is always going to create a new resource a put can update an existing record as well as create a new record okay it does not exist then the other difference is in the status code status code of post request is always 201 and a status code of put request can be either 204 or 200 so when the response contains some data okay it has to be 200 but if there is no content in the response data of a put request you know then it has to be 204 okay so i hope you like this thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video